Hi everyone. Welcome to Curiosity the Science Show. This is for the month of June. You know, this is episode number 56 presented by Young Academy of India. My name is Felix Bast. I'm a professor at Central University of Punjab. Well, it, the show got delayed a little bit. Uh this is today's 3rd of June, the World Bicycle Day, isn't it? because the the delay is because i was on election duty here in punjab a place called mor mor mandi you know so i was really busy you know as you know it is uh, elections going on it's all just got over yesterday was the final round of the or rather final phase of the indian elections and uh, yes i voted here you can see that Yes I hope uh, many of the viewers have also exercised to your franchise wisely and the results are going to come on tomorrow you know we are anxiously looking forward to it it's uh, yeah the counting day is on 4th of June right that is the reason why curiosity got delayed and for the uninformed curiosity is a monthly round up of the science related stories published in the last month okay so uh yeah so as usual um the the show starts with the etymology of the word the month name right june is coming from eunioris you know the latin word eunioris means young so this is basically the month of young people and um, yeah some linguists linguists are those academicians who study languages right or etymologists they look at the etymology of the june and some people say okay june is coming from the goddess juno right the roman goddess uh yeah so the goddess of love and marriage so this is the month of love right and uh, as per the florigraphy month of june is for roses right and also for summer solstice 21st of june is the summer solstice i'm looking forward to it. it's a midsummer day right the longest day it's it's peak summer here in north india the temperature have crossed 50 degrees some reports say even 56 degree but imd has clarified it's because of the faulty sensor indian meteorological department but yeah here it's extremely hot scorching hot right and uh, this month is also uh, the pride month for lgbtq plus all around the world and also monsoon starts now it has already started in in uh, kerala and with the onset of monsoon the diseases right beware of uh, uh, the diseases yeah so yeah the dengue cases are rising in kerala as well as in bangalore and right? bengaluru right so that is uh, the first story of the month and the second one is the season of wild fires so last month we have seen many instances of the wild fires in uttarakhand nanithar uh tamil nadu in uh, uti and other nilgiris and uh, as well as in karnataka so these three states have been widely uh, damaged the forest the wild forests of these states because of the wild fires okay so yeah the third story is the fish kill in periya river in kerala uh the scientists from kufos that is kerala university of fisheries uh, and ocean sciences right so the scientists have found that the reason for the fish kill that is massive death of the fish in this river the periya river very big river isn't it originates from the western ghat so they looked at the water sample and then what they found is the pollution you know so the pollution due to two chemicals the first is hydrogen sulfide and the second one is ammonium so we still don't know the sources of these two but um, the this the levels of these pollutants have skyrocketed probably because of some um, you know some organic you know h2s is usually it's a result of the organ organic um, you know detritus right decomposition while ammonium could be because of some industrial effluent untreated effluent so yeah it is it's a very scary situation if you're living near the periyar be be aware of it and another very interesting paper published last month is about the um, cambrian explosion rather idia current idia current is just before the cambrian explosion around 540 million years back uh, the scientists the paleontologists have no clue why suddenly so many animal phyla emerged in the ocean of course the terrestrial habitation haven't 
uh, happened before then, right? So in India current, why this happened? Suddenly so many of the diverse, the plant and animal diversity. So a new paper argues it's because of the weakening of the Earth's magnetism, right? The magnetic field, uh, which is also linked with the solidification of the inner core, the Earth, the core, right? It has solidified. And because of the solidification, the magnetism reduced 30 times less than what we experience today. Uh, the study is coming from uh, Brazil. Feldspar, a mineral, the scientists closely looked at the, the way the felts, the crystal structure have been organized. That gives a clue to the scientists about the uh, past magnetic effects. You see, the uh, paleoclimatology, very interesting, isn't it? Next story, as usual, every single episode of the Curiosity do feature uh, a story about microplastics. So this time the microplastic story is that it has found in every human testicle examined, every single testicle, friends. And now the microplastic is now linked with reduced sperm, uh, you know, uh, biological virulency of the human sperm. So decline in the sperm count especially, right? And uh, this has also been found in the dog's testicles, right? Every single specimen of the testicle, either in human being or in dogs, the scientists could able to find a microplastics in it. Very alarming, isn't it? Another related story from microplastic side. It has been found in 80% of the blood clots leading to heart attacks and strokes. So, yeah, another... A clue that the microplastics may be involved with ischemic heart diseases as well as the stroke, you know. So, yeah, clots do contain microplastics. So, yeah, one of the episodes of the Curiosity, we, we covered about how to remove the microplastics from the, 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 you know, from the water that we drink. So, how do you get rid of it? Boil it. Almost 85% of microplastics can be removed simply by boiling the water. Yeah, that is, uh, you can just check it out, the power, the archives of this uh, show, okay? So, every single story which I cover here has been linked to the original sources. Please check the show notes. So, you can have an ex a link to my blog. And uh, In the blog, the latest post is the curiosity of this episode. And you can click on to it, okay? So, I put a lot of efforts on this show. I hope you like it. And this entire channel is completely ad-free. I hope you appreciate it and spread the word about curiosity to whoever you know, right? Next story is about copper coating. Copper is a very interesting metal, antibacterial. At the same time, copper is not good if you are drinking, for example, copper-based, um, you know, this kind of like a coffee mug made up of copper. If you drink coffee in it or water bottle, not good because copper causes cuparitis and linked to Alzheimer's. But copper is pretty good for disinfecting a potential. That is why in old temple you can see copper door, right? Copper door handles and uh, locks and all. Yes, that, that makes sense, right? And this paper is about copper coating of the smartphone as well as the public, uh, you know, display system like in airport uh, chaos, the chicken chaos, right? So many people are uh, pressing this chaos screens so what they found is just simply by cutting the copper invisible layer can kill almost 99.99 percentage of the bacteria that is amazing isn't it next loss of visual sensitivity you know can predict the dementia risk 12 years before the onset so if you have this loss of visual sensitivity that is it's basically a kind of a nice game you know that spotting the triangle whenever this uh, triangle forming in the sea of dots you might have seen this kind of uh, uh, puzzle isn't it so lots of dot and suddenly some uh, very you know very slight uh, yeah it is not very obvious uh, you know inconspicuous green triangle appears so if you can spot it that means your visual sensitivity is pretty high. That means you are not uh, having high risk of developing dementia and later, right? Vice versa too. That is this paper is about. Next story is that new needles model after the leeches. So, you know that you need to have this picking needles, right? The picking needles for glucometer, for example, right? If you want to test your uh, blood sugar levels, right? 
so that needles it the new kind of needles models after the leech you know so it's a biomimetics biomimicry isn't it so you are mimicking what is happening in the world so leech can suck the blood right and you won't even feel it after some time you feel the pain isn't it so this is with, with the vacuum there is nothing really penetrating right that is very interesting new needle can draw the blood from the patients so you know um, without even feeling that the blood is being drawn that is amazing next story just 10 super spreaders are responsible for more than one third of the fake news in twitter you know so just 10 people's accounts they are super spreader we came across this term during COVID-19 time, right? In, in uh, Curiosity, we covered this this uh, you know this term so many times and earlier. So here is about the the fake news spread out by the social media like Twitter. Just ten. That is this paper says. Huh? Just check out the paper. Very interesting paper. Next story. Good news for vegetarian vegans. So the veg vegan diet as well as vegetarian diet are linked to lower risk of heart disease, cancer, and death. You know, it is a, a very large number uh, study. I think 30,000 cohorts were involved with this study, right? Do check out. It's very interesting uh, story. Next is a very interesting uh, observation, rather, an animal behavior. Sumatran orangutan uh, is seen treating his wound with medicinal plant liana. The, the leaves of liana plant, this orangutans chew. And then they take out that uh, the chewed, the crushed leaf and apply onto the wound. So the wound is somewhere on the face, you know. I think just below the, the eye. I have seen that video. You can check out that video. It's a very interesting video. And um, yeah, so the ecologist have spent, one lady scientist, uh, kudos to her for spending hours and hours in the forest looking at the behaviors of orangutan. And then she came to know this bizarre behavior. Right, that is a pretty interesting paper. And uh, next story is that there is a new trend in the U.S. that the pre people prefer avoiding localities with gun owners. So if you're buying a, uh, you know, a property, a house to stay, for example, or a plot to construct a house, you look at surrounding area, the neighborhood. So whenever there is a gun owner, so of course in the U.S., the you know you need to enlist in a public repository that you own a gun, right? So in those locations where there are gun ownership, so people avoid it and the prices goes down. So yeah, gun ownership linked with decreased real estate prices. Pretty interesting paper. Yet another reason to argue against gun ownership, isn't it? Uh, next uh, story is about the insurance, the health insurance. There is a term called co-payment. I hope you are aware of it, right? So, yeah, you have to, if whenever you claim a medical insurance policy, uh, you know, some, uh, you know, some percentage of the amount that you commit that you will be paying. The rest of the amount, insurance agency have to pay. So, this co-payment is all about avoiding unnecessary hospital visits, you know. But the paper argues that it is highly inefficient and wasteful, you know. So the concept of a penalty that the cop pays for the emergency room visit, the ER visits, that doesn't result in hospitalization, you know, spits in the face of every patient who cannot possibly self-diagnose chest pains, breathing problems, sprain versus bad tear, etc. So... Basically, you know, these are very inconspicuous. There is no obvious sign of the stroke or most of the public are unaware of it, right? And uh, they tend to avoid the, the going to the ER because of the co-payment. Even if you get a heart attack, you think, okay, it's nothing, not a big deal. Because they, they want to avoid paying the amount in case that doesn't result in hospitalization, the insurance agencies will not pay, right? So that is why this co-payment is a very bad system that is this this paper argues another story coming from sweden so the rape cases in sweden is now increasing that is pretty alarming right and well what is more interesting is that it coincides with swedish government decision to criminalize prostitution so criminalizing prostitution led to increase in rape cases 
in Sweden. Okay. Next case, uh, next story is 16 story. In this episode, we are covering so many stories. Okay, I did a lot of effort on it. I hope you will like it. 16 story is that the people who are good at learning and pattern recognition, that is, you know, memory power too, perform poorly in tasks that need active thinking and decision making. You know, so yeah, so if you are really good with rot learning, memorization, uh, then you tend to be a little bit not good with the decision making as well as for the active thinking. So maybe that is also linked with the autism. So autistic people are uh, quite similar, you see, that is what no? the, the pattern recognition and learning is pretty low for them, but vice versa for the others, right? Yeah. Next story is that 17th story, nasal oxytocin spray. You know, you remember the oxytocin is a very important hormone linked with happiness, right? It's like a hugging hormone, isn't it? Or kissing hormone. So yeah, so loneliness is reduced if your oxytocin levels are higher. So now this new paper is about nasal oxytocin spray to combat loneliness. Very interesting. So it alleviates the symptoms associated with the loneliness. Uh, uh, you know, this study included 78 people, right? N is 78. Next story is about the liberals, right? Liberals hate conservatives three times more strongly than vice versa in terms of Facebook posts, like versus dislikes. Very interesting, right? Conservatives don't hate much of the liberals, but liberals completely hate conservatives. Well, this is an uh, American context. Might not be true elsewhere too, but still, uh, nevertheless, it's pretty interesting for me. Next, study of 15,000 adults with depression. What is the conclusion? Night owls, that is the evening types, report that SSRI, that is selective serotonin reabsorption inhibitor like Prozac, doesn't work well for them compared to the morning type. So Prozac for depression, antidepressive agent or other SSRIs work better for, you know, morning larks, you know, not the night owls, right? 20th story, cats suffer H5N1 infection in the brain, blindness and death after consuming raw milk. You see, raw milk is linked with H5N1 infection. So beware of it. The the you know the the raw milk consumption, even for the human being, right? One in five retail milk samples test positive for H5N1 avian flu diagnostics in the US because of the faulty pasteurization. So yeah, pasteurized milk uh, you cannot completely trust for consuming raw because the pasteurization process can be faulty. Right, one in five retail milk samples are, uh, you know, contaminated in the U.S. Such a high economy, highly developed countries like in the U.S. One in five. Look at that. And now, can you compare that here in India? It could be much, much higher. Well, who knows, right? So beware of consuming pasteurized milk raw. Of course, you can boil. I think usually in India, most of the Indians boil pasteurized milk before consumption, right? So then it's okay. Next story, 60 grams of the dry fruit mix, specifically walnuts, pistachios, hazelnuts, and cashews, daily for 16 weeks, 16 weeks, around four months, improve the insulin sensitivity in obese adults, especially insulin sensitivity in the brain. So yeah, it's a very interesting, you know, um, nutritional scenario for diabetes management, right? Dry fruit mix for four months. Pretty interesting. Check out the paper, right? Another story is pretty interesting. I really like, you know, whenever I'm an outdoor, I, I like to wear a, 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 an eyeglass and also, you know, um, Bluetooth connected, what? Uh, earphones, right? So this particular paper is about a new type of an eyeglass and a new type of a headphone or earphone which is connected to the AI algorithm of your phone, smartphone. So what it does is that whenever you spot a person in a crowd, 
let us say crowd of 500 people you are spotting a random person and your earphone listens everyone and you know this program the ai algorithm can zoom into that particular person whom you are looking at to eavesdrop what that person is speaking right all the rest of the noise it cancels out like just like the algorithm i use to record this curiosity i'm using a you know gpu based noise suppression algorithm inside obs studio to record this that is why uh, my voice is pretty crisp and clear i hope it's really clear to you right because i spend a lot of efforts on it right as you can see i'm speaking to you from my lab here in my university there is an ac running students are speaking you know lab is working but still not much of the noise right because of this uh, gpu based noise suppression algorithm which i use but this one is your smartphone ai algorithm to spot a person and eavesdrop on that person so well privacy friends beware of it so you know all these are huge concerns for the privacy advocates like me you know so that is pretty interesting at the same time it's alarming to this story 23rd story is about gardening that leads to lower insomnia so if you suffer from poor sleep quality maybe you should attempt gardening you know so that associated with lower insomnia next story glans penis volume is associated with increased risk of premature ejaculation you know because that area is the most sensitive part of the penis right and uh, yeah so that is why it is uh, premature ejaculation is associated with higher glans penis area next story new cryo preservation method the method is called medy medy to freeze the brain tissues that is pretty interesting i never ever heard of it right in my lifetime to witness something like this like einstein's brain is still frozen i'm not sure when we can revive it i hope we can revive one day so this is a, a baby step towards it a new method developed medi to freeze the brain tissues and thaw it to revive it fantastic right so they revived this frozen tissue from 9 year old girl with epilepsy and after thawing it worked fantastically right reimplanted into the the kid's brain and it's working fine medy i think it's it's going to be a breakthrough scientific discovery of 2024 let's wait and watch right i'm really excited miracle yes science is amazing friends so those science don't have evangelist right to spread that the science is true believe in science no one is going to spend no one is going to put money to spread that word to right science need a lot of money also right but still science result in miracles next story jim simmons dies age 86 years he is a stellar physicist you know he worked in mit uh, a very short stint i would say Uh, but during his time you know he did a lot of studies uh, you know like um, um uh, uh like string theory a very famous uh, you know he's one of the developers of the string string theory like string theory uh, in the subatomic particle and the universe isn't it so jim simmons uh, he dies at the age of 86 he was a smoker too you know Uh, it's a, it's a miracle to how he survived till the age of 86 but he is much more well known because he quit mit in just within a matter of one or two years just after developing so many landmark papers in physics but suddenly after that he shifted into you know personal financing in wall street he started quant right so it is basically uh, you know a, a fund called medallion fund a uh, based on quantitative uh, investment so you know he just want to make a lot of money right so that that fund is basically a mutual fund right angel investing mutual fund medallion fund it has you know for the last several decade the fund resulted in 66 percentage of the xirr every year the annual return is more than 66 percentage amazing isn't it so his center brain he devoted onto the Uh, mutual fund and stock market investing 
very interesting 27 stories the summer of 2023 i told you it is really getting hot 2024 i'm sure it's much hotter than 2023 but the paper is about 2023 summer was the hottest summer in the last 2000 years you know well the hottest month of the year hottest year of the decade everything get, keep on getting broken again and again we all because of the climate change friends next story 85 percentage of the indians believe that the climate change is affecting our day-to-day -day life as per the the pew so it's a yale university survey you know uh, at the same time the, the climate change remains elusive in the poor you know uh, poor mandates right most of the poor manifestos of uh, parties in india uh, doesn't feature a single word about the climate change though some parties of course promise investing in public transportation new trains like one day bharat yeah appreciable yeah all right so the next story is uh, another very massive study including 8000 cats cat story yeah good for all the cat lovers like you and me which cat live longest the study found the burmese cat live longest while siamese cat shorter so siamese so uh, kind of very very poorly looking you know doesn't have any fur uh yeah so i i don't feel attracted to siamese cat i feel you know very sad looking at it right it's all because of human fascination with uh, strangest animal right so some mutation resulted randomly that resulted in cats without fur unfortunately the same uh, breed siamese live shortest the lifespan of siamese is pretty low you know so another reason we should stop breeding the siamese it's just like dog breeds too right some of these dog breeds with a very short snout you know uh, yeah the like pug right these breeds also doesn't live that long you know so yeah we we got to be selective with this kind of breeding i would say right it is a part of animal cruelty i would say next story another medical miracle deaf baby now can hear after the gene therapy the gene involved that the gene therapy is basically it's a crispr based therapy of a uh, over expression of a gene called otof gene uh, coding for a protein called uh, autoferlin protein you know that is uh, that is linked with auditory sensation right and the baby is completely cured of the deafness amazing and the guy who did this work is a very important very famous scientist from cambridge university uh, a professor manohar Indian origin scientist working in University of Cambridge, a proud moment for the entire medical sciences, I would say, biomedical sciences. And the final story of this month's uh, curiosity is that a new regenerative leader cells have been discovered in human liver. So, you know, the liver cells, I mean, even human body is a lot of miracles, right? And so many things we still don't know anything about the human body, like this new story, story about a new type of cell. These are leader cell, right? And these leader cells have uh, regenerative potentials. So that is a good hope for people with end-stage liver disease like cirrhosis or the fourth stage fatty liver disease, right? So this is an amazing story. The new regenerative, like a stem cell, right? Regenerative cell called leader cells have been discovered from human liver next part of the curious yeah well just before that we have um, a cover story of this uh, episode every episode do feature one cover image and the cover story so the cover story of this month's episode is a new evolutionary tree it's about phylogeny right phylogenetic tree my own discipline right a new tree has been uh, published of the evolution of flowers so how do the flowers evolve right a sudden burst of the lineages happened 150 million years ago in the Juras late jurassic era as per this new paper please check out that paper and another very interesting uh, uh, phylogeny story is about arabica uh, the coffee aficionados like you and me right 
I'm, I hope I'm just wondering you like coffee as much as me. So Arabica is uh, an expensive coffee variety. Robusta is a little bit, uh, you know, inexpensive while Arabica is expensive, right? Variety. So Arabica originated 1 million years back in Ethiopia. So the geographical origin of that Arabica is Ethiopia in uh, uh, Africa. After random crossing between two other wild coffee varieties as per this new phylogeny paper published last month. Another phylogeny paper is about a very interesting uh, tree. Uh, you know that the tree is dramatic tree. It's like an upside down tree. The tree with the roots on the top. Have you seen Bob? Uh, you know Baobab tree? B-A-O-B-A-B -A -A -B, Baobab tree. Right in Africa and Madagascar, the tree is pretty common, right? So what the paper says is that the baobab tree, the upside down tree, though it is not like roots, it's just stumps only, but it looks like a root, originated in Madagascar 21 million years back. And then it spread to Africa as well as to Australia via long voyage, oceanic voyage. That's amazing, right? I mean, it's just natural voyage, the spreading, right? It's not that the human being uh, 21 million years back, come on, it's nothing, right? No, no mammals too, right? Uh, we haven't, I mean, the primates haven't evolved, right? Yeah. Next story. Hey, that paper is in Nature, okay? You can you can check out the Nature's cover image of the, the, the tree evolution. Yeah, the Facebook group, we do have a Facebook group with more, a lot of other stories that my our moderators do share. So do check out in the show notes uh, that takes you to our Facebook group. Next part of the curiosity as usual is observance, the science related observance. I told you today, the 3rd of June is the cycle day, bicycle day for all the cycle lovers. Today is also moon Mars conjunction for the sky watchers. Right? You can do, go check out in the night. You can see moon and very near the dot is Mars. Confirmed. Fifth, day after tomorrow is World Environment Day. Seventh is World Food Safety Day. Eighth is Oceans Day for all marine biologists and oceanographers all around the world. Eighth. right? Fourteenth is Blood Donor Day. I love donating blood. So every year I make sure that at least one unit of my blood I donate to, uh, you know, the, the public blood bank without any money, right? The, the, those, not a private blood bank, but the public blood bank, right? So 14th is the day to celebrate all around the world, all blood donors united. You're saving someone's life. 21 is June solstice. Right, summer solstice here in the northern hemisphere. Twenty second is the strawberry moon. That is basically the full moon of the month of June is called strawberry moon. Uh, it it happens on the night of twenty first or early morning day hours of twenty second here in India. It's at six a.m. Right. Twenty seventh of June is moon Saturn conjunction. Same frame, moon and Saturn together. And the same day, you can also see June booted meteor shower in case you happen to be in, uh, you know, high alt altitude area. So on 27th of this month, I hope with my mother, we will be in Neil Greece. You know, our vacation starts. So we are planning a trip to Tamil Nadu and I will be visiting Tamil Nadu. We will be in uh, Kerala and also Karnataka and uh, Andhra Pradesh. So in the next one month. Right after after uh, you know three weeks the vacation starts. So on this day, I hope I can see booted right June booted meteor shower from uh, Neil Greece. Twenty ninth is World Tropics Day, and now finally opportunities. Uh, what to expect? What are the opportunities for the young scientists and young researchers and students? Fulbright Nehru a PhD fellowship. It's open now. Fifteenth July is the deadline. Uh, check out the show notes for all the links, okay? MCSA, that is Marie Curie, very prestigious Marie Curie fellowships, right? Global postdoc call in the EU, European Union is open now. 11th of September is a deadline. Call for applications for early career scientists to join the scientific committee on Oceanic Research Executive Committee, right? 
so the deadline is 28th june so in case you are working in uh, uh, ocean related uh, field like oceanography or marine biology you can apply uh, to join the scientific international scientific committee a very prestigious think tank the world academy of sciences twas postdoctoral fellowship is also open now deadline is 1st of july uh, the same twas the world academy of sciences phd fellowship is also open 1st of july is a deadline all these are all fully paid international fellowships okay and also 2024 visiting scholar scheme for scientific committee on antarctic research scar right so visiting scholar program it's open now 31st of august is the deadline and as usual several junior research fellowship and research scientist positions are open shared as and when uh, you know uh, the members share it in our facebook group so do check out the facebook group and do uh, please be part of it so uh, yeah you can just search the name of young academy of india in the facebook i repeat young academy of india and join our public facebook group as as simple as that so do share this episode with whoever may be benefited in among your social circle and do also do like and subscribe and uh, that will definitely increase the morale of myself you know it is something like patting on my shoulder for this work so basically for every single episode of curiosity i spend at least a week or two of practice you know i need to read thoroughly and who am i doing this work for is that for you no i'm, I'm doing this curiosity episode for myself because this episode is you know, it is a platform for myself to read better and to increase, uh, you know, to make my own lectures here in my Central University of Punjab as well as in UGC Swayam. I do have a course. So these lectures, I want to make it as intellectually stimulating as possible. So that is why I like to keep up to date with the world of sciences, what is actually happening in and around myself, right? So yeah, the, the day you stop learning, you start dying, very famously stated by Albert Einstein. So I don't want to stop learning any time in my life. So that is why I'm doing this episode, this curiosity for myself. right? And in case you also found some of these stories interesting, keep subscribed. In case you found this super boring, you're welcome to get out of this you know unsubscribe from my channel it, it doesn't matter for me it's number of subscriber i don't care really you know anyway i hope you like this episode and i wish you the very best very productive curiosity something like this you know i have this on my desk this is you know this is a field microscope i i bought it from copenhagen in denmark so it's a it's basically danish scouts microscope you know scout is also a, a great organization i was very much part of during my school days so whenever you go for hiking you can just take it and look at you know like pollens or the seed or small small insect 5x ma magnification so i have several such uh, items on my desk you can see that pearl and uh, you know few uh, you know a few seed some nature inspired stuff and uh, whenever i'm free i just look at it so like that i wish you uh, the month of june be full of curiosity for you right look around yourself and ask why and don't believe anything without proper evidence right that is the hallmark of critical thinking that is all about curiosity so please take care of yourself and in, if you can someone else too uh, I will see you soon in yet another episode in the month of July. Until then, goodbye.